create the hazard function, right? Okay, so if you refer to the lecture notes week two, right? Uh, we have done until the Kaplan-Meier estimates for um, uh, on how to calculate the uh, survival function. Okay. Next, we move on. Can you see my screen, right? So uh, we move on to the next part, which is the standard error of the Kaplan-Meier estimate. This is actually a Greenwood's formula, right? So it will be. Uh, it is a well-known. Um, uh, Formula known, uh, no, sorry. It is a well known formula called the Greenwood's formula, right? So, since that uh, we start with, uh, with S at T, okay, which is equal to the sum of I from 1 until the jth interval of your survivor uh, probability, okay, the survival probability. Then the log S hat T, let's take the pen here. The log S hat T equals to the uh, log of the product of pi i. Okay, so the log of your S hat T okay, equals to the log of the product of your pi. <clears throat> okay, so um, it is also equals to the summation of uh, i from one until j log of your pi. Right, and then the variance of the log s hat t equals to the um, for this part variance of your log s hat t equals to the variance of the summation log pi. Okay, so in this case, right, it's a variance summation log. It is equals to if you follow the uh, variance properties. Okay, so it is equals to the summation of the variance of log pi. Okay, so uh, suppose we let xj, okay, the number of individuals who survive uh, through interval beginning at tj, okay, then x, uh, xj is coming from a binomial distribution with your n is nj and your p is pj. Okay, and your xj equals to nj minus number, nj is number of uh, total numbers, nj at interval j. dj is uh, number of dying or, or uh, an individual who experience an event, right? So xj equals to nj minus dj, right? Where am I? Okay, so therefore the variance of NJ minus DJ, okay, equals to um, NPQ, okay? Since that we know that your XJ coming from binomial distribution, okay, XJ is binomial NJ PJ, okay? So the mean of your XJ, right, is The E of your XJ is equals to NJPJ. Okay, so your variance of your XJ equals to NJPJ 1 minus PJ. Okay, so and you know that your XJ is equals to NJ minus DJ. Okay, so the variance of uh, XJ okay, equals to nj pj minus pj okay xj equals to nj minus pj okay so what is xj again a number of patient who is survive right <clears throat> okay so since that your phj equals to nj minus dj over nj okay or equals to 1 minus dj over nj Okay, therefore your variance of your p hat j equals to a variance of nj dj uh, nj minus dj over nj squared. Okay, 
So this is true, right? So the variance of PJ, right? So variance of your PJ equals to the variance of your whole thing. NJ, PJ over, where am I? Why? Okay, over NJ. Poor handwriting. Very frustrating. Okay, very poor handwriting. Okay, so this is variance of NJ minus DJ. What's wrong with this? Okay, over NJ. Okay, the whole thing. Right, so this is equals to, you bring out 1 over NJ, okay? So this is equals to 1 over NJ squared, okay? Variance of your XJ, right? So uh, this is the variance of XJ, right? So 1 over NJ squared, variance of your XJ, which is NJ minus DJ. Okay, so variance of NJ minus DJ has been calculated earlier, which is NJ PJ1 minus PJ. Okay, and then you can cancel off this one. It becomes PJ1 minus PJ over NJ. Okay, so what is PJ hat? PJ hat is actually the probability of surviving. Okay, so this is actually the variance of your PJ hat. All right, any problem so far? Okay, so currently we are not looking for the variance of PJ hat, right? We are actually looking for this one, equation 2.3. Okay, we want to find what is the variance of log S hat P. Okay, remember, right? We don't want to know, uh, We of course we want to find what is the probability of surviving, but we are more interested with the um, Kaplan-Meier estimates uh, of survival function, which is uh, variance of log S hat P. So in this case, we are using the Taylor series approximation, okay, to the variance, uh, to the variance, right? So the variance of your GX, where your GX equals to the DGX over DX squared, okay, right? And then times with your variance of X. Okay, so if you follow this Taylor approximation in equa uh, sorry in equation 2.5, we can calculate what is your variance of log pj hat. Okay, so the variance of the log pj hat equals to you differentiate your uh, assume that the log pj hat equals to your um, sorry. What am I talking about? Okay, assume that your gx equals to the log pj hat. So GX equals to log PJ hat, right? So um, variance of log PJ hat equals to differentiate your GX, okay, which is equals to um, differentiate your GX function, okay, which is equals to one over log speed uh sorry one over log P, uh, not one over log one over pj hat okay so if you re, uh if you differentiate log you will get one over pj and then square root them variance of your pj hat okay because here is variance of your x not variance of your gx okay so your variance of your x is your pj hat right so this is equals to, you have calculated earlier the variance of your PJ hat, which is equals to PJ hat 1 minus PJ hat over NJ, times with your 1 over PJ hat squared, right? And then, right, you simplify them, the answer, okay, sorry. So this one, okay, can be cancelled off, become PJ only, right? So it becomes...
Okay, so what is 1 minus PJ hat? PJ hat is the probability of surviving. So 1 minus PJ hat is actually you are looking for DJ. Okay, so it is DJ, sorry, DJ over NJ, NJ minus DJ. Okay, because you know that the PJ hat is equals to DJ over NJ, right? Sorry, NJ minus DJ. Okay, what am I talking about? All right, any problem so far? So finally, just plug into the variance of log S hat T, which is equals to the summation of DJ over NJ times NJ minus DJ. Okay, but if you follow from 2.5, equation 2.5, Okay, equation 2.5 about the Taylor series. The variance of log S hat T equals to 1 over S hat T, variance of your S hat T, right? So your uh, variance of your S hat T equals to the, um, equals to the S hat T squared times the variance of your log S hat T, okay? And your variance of your log S hat T is here, equation 2.6. Okay, so I just write it here. Variance of your S hat T. Okay, okay, just bring that the S hat T squared. And then it's your variance of your log S hat T, which is equals to sum of DJ over NJ, NJ minus DJ. Okay, so if you want to calculate the standard error of your uh, Kaplan-Meier estimate is S E S hat T, which is equals to square root of your variance. Okay, so the S E S hat T is equals to the square root of your variance S hat T. Okay, so which is equals to square root of this function. So it becomes ST times with the summation of DJ over NJ, NJ minus DJ to the power of half. Okay? Any question regarding the Greenwood's formula? No question. Right? So um, the reason that we need to we need to get what is the ST for S hat T is because we can apply this formula in the confidence interval for estimate survival function, okay? So you can calculate the confidence interval by uh, plug in the SE for S hat T. So S hat T, um, we know that S hat, S hat T is assumed to be normally distributed. It's a bit strange, right? Because as, I, as you learn in the uh, early part, which is in week one, we know that your um, survival function is a skewed data, okay? And then now you, we, we say that the survival functions, okay, is normally distributed with mean S hat T and the standard deviation equals to equation 2.7. <clears throat> How to minimize this, okay? All right? So in general, the, the survival, uh, survival data is actually skewed. But for the survival function, okay, it is assumed to be normally distributed. Okay, with your mean S hat T and your standard error is S hat T. Okay, then your confidence interval is this one. Okay, this formula, S hat T plus minus Z alpha over 2 S E S hat T. All right. Any questions so far? Okay, so if you look here, <coughs> some of the confidence limit, uh, some of the distribution, okay, some of the data lie outside the limit zero one. Therefore, we need to transform the survival estimate. We use the log transformation, okay, number one, we can use the logistic transformation. Number two, we can use the log log transformation. 
Okay, so for the first part, which is the logistic transformation, this is the formula where your SE, um, SEA1 or alpha, no, SEA1 equals to, I don't know this uh, symbol, okay? So this logistic transformation, the standard error for the logistic transformation is equals to 1 over 1 minus S hat T, sum of the um, DJ over NJ minus, uh, NJ times NJ minus DJ. While the log log transformation we represent as this function, okay, so it's a log log ST and it will give you this SE, okay? Right, uh, to calculate the confidence uh, interval, we can look at example 2.4. Okay, which is in the textbook. Okay, so this is the uh, how to, um, given the example, okay, we are using the um, time to discontinuation of the use of your uh, of an IUD, right? So given a time interval, and then uh, we can we are using the Nelson Allen estimate to of the survival function for for the data from example 1.1. Okay, so here you can calculate the probability of uh, survival. Okay, and here you can calculate your S hat t. Okay. So if you look from this um, from this uh, example, okay, they just they have two way of using uh, either you can use Nelson Allen or Kaplan Meyer. So they have slightly difference in the survival function. But for your course, you just focus for Kaplan Meyer estimates, okay? So I just want you to refer to this uh, problem, example two point four. Okay, and then can you calculate the standard error? Okay. For the, uh, for this data. Okay. Where is the example? Okay. All right. So um, say that we are using the time for discontinuation of an IUD, right? So you have the time interval. You already calculated earlier your S hat T, and then you can get your S E S hat T using the formula uh, given, okay, in the uh, lecture notes. And then you can calculate the confidence interval, right? Which is the formula is S hat T plus minus Z alpha over 2, S E S hat T. Okay, so you can calculate the confidence interval for each um, time interval, right? Okay, so if you can see for the first time interval, there is no confidence interval, right? So it makes sense because uh, it is S hat T, which is equals to 1 plus minus Z alpha over 2 times with 0. Um, okay, so you will get the confidence interval is equals to uh, plus minus 1. Uh, no, 1. Okay, so we just leave it blank here, right? So you can start to calculate the confidence interval for the next interval. Okay. Right, so you can have a practice based on this example on how to calculate the confidence interval and also the standard error of your S hat T. Okay, so let us refer back to the lecture notes. 
right? Let, let us look at the life table estimate of the hazard function, okay? So this one, um, it's been asked in your tutorial one, right? So let us look at that part, okay? So um, instead of just referring straight away to the hazard function, we have to look at the, uh, on how to calculate the uh, standard, uh, sorry, the confidence interval and also the standard errors. Now, the life table estimate of the hazard function HT. We divide in the data into M groups, okay, example by month. Okay, similar what when we do grouping in life table for survival function. So we define, suppose DJ is a death, okay, number of deaths occur in J's group and NJ be the number of alive at the start of the J's interval and hence at risk of death for J from 1 until M, okay. For the actuarial uh, assumption, the censored survival time is assumed to occur uniform, uniformly throughout the Jth interval. Hence, the average number of patients who at risk of death during the Jth interval is the similar one, Nj prime equals to Nj minus Cj over 2. And then assuming further that the death rate is constant during the J, uh, Jth interval, the average time survived in that interval is Nj prime minus dj over 2, okay, times tau j, okay. So your tau j is the length of your j interval, okay. So this is um, another notation to be added here for the hazard function. You need to know the length of your interval, okay. So nj prime minus dj over 2 is actually the probability of um, it's not probability of surviving. Yeah, the average time survive, right, in that interval. Okay. Then you can calculate the life table estimate of hazard function in the J interval as H star T, which is equals to DJ over NJ prime minus DJ over 2 times with the tau j okay and uh, okay and um, your t is between your t j prime with t j prime minus one okay t j plus one prime okay right so before we move on to the next part let us look at example 2.5 example 2.5 We have discussed the. Uh, okay. So in this lecture note, it doesn't give you the the SE for your hazard, right? Right. So if you refer to the textbook, okay, you can find the standard error of the uh, hazard function SE H star T, which is equals to H star T times with uh, the square root of 1 minus h star t and j over 2 squared over square root of dj. Okay, so and confidence interval for the corresponding through hazard will if the m number can obtain in section 2.3. So you can check the details. Now let us look at this. This is actually the the one looked similar to the tutorial question, right? So in this case, okay, we are looking uh, on how to calculate the hazard function, okay? So given a time period, 0 to 60, and then you need to calculate the length of your interval. So in this case, 0 to 12, so you have the length is 12, okay? Same goes with the uh, 12 to 24, 24 to 36, 36 to 48, 48 to 60, and then 60 dash, okay? So you have equal length, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, and finally, the last one is 36, okay? So you can refer this 
real data set in table 2.1. Okay, then you calculate your DJ and your NJ prime so that you can ca uh, calculate the H star T where the H star T formula is DJ over N prime J minus DJ over two times tau J, okay? All right, so that is all about the hazard function. Before I move on to the Kaplan Meyer hazard function, any questions so far? Any question? You can try this on um, later to complete question one. Okay, but since I already made some error in my solutions, I think I will fix it and 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 next and uh, publish the solution next week. Okay, so the Kaplan Meyer estimate of the hazard function. Okay, uh, as we ref um, okay, so done about the life table. No question. Shall we move to the hazard function for Kaplan Meyer? Okay, so let an I be the number of uh, uh, number who alive just before TI and so at risk at TI. Let DI be the number of death in TI, TI plus delta. So the Kaplan Meyer has the estimate for the ith interval is given by H star J, okay, equals to DJ over NJ times with the tau J. Okay, this is slightly different. Okay, with the H star T, right? Because in H star T, we are taking the average survive, right? Okay, so here T is between TJ and TJ plus 1, okay? And your tau J equals to TJ plus 1 minus TJ. So you can refer to example 2.6 using the time to discontinuation of the use of it as a as a reference, right? So let us look at this example. Okay, so refer to example 2.7, time to discontinuation of the use of an IUD data. So this is how we calculate your H, H hat T, right? So your tau J is TJ plus 1 minus TJ, which is the last interval minus the What is the formula? No. DJ over NJ times tau J. Okay. So DJ over NJ times with your tau J. So the information that you need is just the number of uh, events, uh, number of alive who, and also at risk, and times with the length interval. Right, time, time, length, length of time interval. Okay, so that is how you, uh, all the values that you need to calculate the H star T. Right, and to calculate the S E H uh, H hat T is equals to H hat T times with the square root of N J minus D J over N J times D J. Okay, so you can also uh, calculate the SEH hat T, right? And this is how the hazard function uh, will look like. Okay, you can see it is slightly different from the estimated survival function where uh, if we look at the trend or the 
uh, the, I mean like it is actually for survival function, you can see it is in the, uh, it will look as a decreasing uh, step function. But for the uh, hazard function, you can see that um, the hazard is uh, either increasing. Okay, so in this case, we can see it is, um, you can see it is, uh, the peak is at um, time between 80 to 100, but you can see the pattern is uh, totally different with the survival function because survival function it is decreasing over time right so you can see here for the hazard function uh, it will look as a step function okay right so if you look at figure 2.8 if you look at the explanation okay from this figure there is some evidence that the longer the iud use the greater is the risk of the continuation, discontinuation, okay? So this is how when we explain about the figure, okay? So, but in this uh, picture or in this uh, graph, it doesn't uh, very clear, okay? So you can, um, okay? So here they give you some suggestion, the approximate standard areas of the estimated hazard function at different times, give you a little help in interpreting the plot. Okay, so instead of just reporting that um, the longer the time, the, the higher the hazard or the higher the risk, you can also report the standard error. Comment at each time point what will happen in the standard error as well, right? Okay, so finally, this is the last part, I think, uh, the cumulative hazard function, okay? So if you recall that uh, in week two, right, um, week two lecture notes, right? So we start with the cumulative hazard equals to H hat T equals to negative log S hat T, right? So this negative log S hat T equals to the negative sum summation log one minus DI over NI or dj over nj right so if we expand through the taylor's expansion okay so this h hat t equals to the summation of d di over ni okay where um in here we say we ignore the higher order term okay we, we just ignore the squared and the uh, to the power of three etc so that's why we just focus for the first term which is equals to um, a summation of di over ni, okay? Right, so this is the last part where you are going to use it in your tutorial. So estimating the median and percentile of survival data the median is used to describe the survival data given by we to, to calculate the median is actually the middle point. So T50, okay, which is equals to the minimum, okay, TI given that your S high, uh, sorry, S hat TI is less than or equals to 0 0.5, okay. So which is the smallest observed survival time for which the value of the estimated survival function is less than. 0.5 okay so the p p percentile is def uh, defined as tp which is i think this is equals to uh, yeah the median is actually the middle value okay the the 50th fifth sorry <clears throat> the 50th percentile right so some of you might ask me like why is it t50 okay because we want to be uh consistent with the percentile so that's why we use 50. So the 50th percentile is actually your median, right? So the median value is 50. Okay, that's why T50 here. Okay, and, and you know that it should be less than or equals to half which is 0 0.5, okay? So percentile, like in your tutorial, 
the formula is T hat P equals to minimum of T I. Okay, given that your S hat T I is less than 1 minus P over 100. Okay, so you need to look at your S hat T I. Okay, it is less than uh, 1 minus P over 100. Okay. So, um, sorry. So, which is the smallest value observed survival time for which the value of the estimated survival function is less than 1 minus P over 100. Okay. So, that is one thing to calculate the percentile. And the last part is the confidence interval. Okay, I think for the median and the percentile, um, it looks complicated, okay, but it is quite straightforward. When you have the table, you can get it straightforward, right? Okay, so uh, the confidence interval for the median and percentile. So again, referring to equation 2.5, which is the variance of your S hat T, okay? Uh, this is actually from uh, Taylor's function, okay? That Taylor's expansion. Various variance of your S hat TP is approximately D of your S hat TP over DTP, variance of your TP, okay? So now this uh, DSTP over DTP equals to F hat TP. We assume that this function equals to function F. Okay, we name it as F hat TP, right? All right, so this F hat TP is actually the estimate of your PDF function. Okay, PDF of the survival function at TP. Right, so to calculate this F hat TP, okay, which is equals to S U hat P minus S hat lambda P over lambda hat P minus U P. What is U P? U P hat equals to the maximum of your T J when your S hat T J is greater than are equals to 1 minus P over 100 plus some error. So in this case, your error is usually taken as 0 0.05, right? While your lambda hat P is the minimum of your TJ, minimum of your time, survival time, where your estimated survival function is less than or equals to 1 minus P over 100 minus epsilon, right? So finally, to calculate the variance of your T hat, uh, sorry, variant TP, it is equals to uh, approximately uh, the D, uh, it is equals to approximately one over D S T P over D T uh, to the power of uh, to the power of two or squared times with the variance of S hat TP. Okay, so which is one over squared. Uh, value, okay, it is equals to DSTP over DTP to the power of negative 2, right? Okay, therefore, your SE, uh, sorry, SETP, which is equals to the square root of your variance, okay, which is equals to DSTP over DTP to the power of negative 1 times with your SES hat TP, okay? What is your SES hat TP? Right, so SES hat TP, right, times with your F hat TP inverse, right? So using equation 2.7, 2.10, and 2.12, we can obtain the SETP. Okay, right, so you use equation 2.9, 2.10, and 2.7. Sorry, 2.7 and 2.10, sorry, in your 2.12, right? So you need to refer to equation 2.7, which is here. This one, okay? So equation 2.7 is S, E, S, hat, T, right?
right? So you substitute in equation 2.12, you can get what is your S hat PP, okay? Then to calculate the confidence interval for your TP, it's TP plus minus Z alpha over 2 SETP hat. Right? So that is how we calculate the confidence interval for median and percentile, right? Okay, so you can continue to tutorial um, one, okay? But I would suggest like instead of just calculating the median and the 75th percentile, I would suggest to you to calculate the confidence interval for the median and confidence interval for the 75th percentile as well. And we will discuss this uh, uh, at the beginning of our lecture next week. Is it okay? Right? And also you can describe the hazard function based on the plot in A. I think next week we can finish off the tutorial one. Uh, before we move on to the next part, which is comparing more than two groups, okay? So I think like tutorial one, question two, can be bring forward to the next um, to the next uh, chapter, which is about comparing between two or more groups, okay? Using the log rank test, okay? But we can also make a comparison between um these two group using the survival function okay so if there is no question i think i'm going to end up the session okay i will see you again next week at six o'clock right so it's just this week hopefully that next week okay we will refer back to the normal time okay so that's it uh, uh doctor. For, yeah yeah uh, sorry uh just want to ask uh, regarding to the the style of the class, ah, uh, mm. because the style, uh, doctor say about now the UM decide to change to the hybrid. Is it, uh, compulsory yeah. already? Yeah. Also, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they they are going to implement it. Yeah, 